morning, good day, good evening, everyone. Pari Luis, Pari Or, Pari Ereko, Ashkari Polor Room, all over the world. I waited for this event like an excited child for Christmas. A few months, weeks ago, um, a good colleague and a friend, Olivia Katranjian, the founder of Yala, called me and mentioned about possibility of holding this wonderful, wonderful resources birthday together, celebrating Armenian Poetry Project's 15th anniversary. Um, to say I was excited, it's an understatement. I've been a huge fan of Lola Kondakchian's work and her amazing poetry project for years and years. And to have an honor to talk about it and celebrate with everyone and with readers like we have today is just a special treat. And to work with two fantastic women who I admire greatly, Lola and Olivia, it just makes it extra special. Armenian Poetry Project, if you're joining us and you don't know it, I urge everyone go and look at it. It's the most wonderful, the richest resource on Armenian poetry, the most inclusive place you'll find poetry in Armenian, in Western Armenian, Eastern Armenian, English, French, translations, Karapar, uh, Middle Armenian, anything you like. It's constantly updated. It's incredibly well tagged, my personal thing about it. You can find anything there. It has about 3,000 posts, 200 audio clips, and Lola is updating it literally every day. So please go use it, read it, enjoy it, and most importantly, support it, because poetry and poets need a lot of support. So today is a birthday party. It's a bit of an unusual event. So I want everyone to be in a party mode. I have a glass of wine to raise to Lola and her 15 fantastic readers from all over the world. And they are going to share some of the poems Lola has picked. Um, Lola, we'll hear from Lola herself and we'll hear from Olivia as well, a few words about Yala, another organization who is working with us today. But Lola, before we start, I want to ask a quick question to you. Is this what you thought Armenian Poetry Project will be 15 years ago when you started it as Dead Poets Society? <laughs> I had no, I had no idea it would evolve like this. Uh, that it would it would find so many readers that there would be so many so much interest and collaborations all over the world. So I'm thrilled. Thank you for asking that question. That's great. Can we agree now while I've got you on spotlight? Let's do a birthday party every, not 15 years. Let's not wait for another 15 years. Thumbs not up. Every year, every five years, and all our readers have to come back and read another poet. And I hope sure. it grows bigger and richer and more powerful. But thank you for all the joy you bring us with this resource, Lola. Thank you. I'll bake a cake next time. I, I really hope next one will be online. We come and read the poetry we have at the Armenian Institute Library in person. We, we'd love to see you all there. So I'll stop here because we want to hear a lot of beautiful poetry. There will be a link we share in the chat line and it will be in Facebook comments as well for everyone who is watching on Facebook. All the poems, almost all of them are translated into English as well. So you can read the other language, whichever language the readers are reading, you can check the other one. Everyone is on mute, but please, please talk to us in the chat line, keep in touch, email us, tweet us, talk to us. We love hearing from you. I'll stop here and I'd, I'd like to invite Olivia Katranjan a fantastic writer and the founder of Yala, my absolutely favorite new organization to say a few words about Yala. Thank you so much, Sato, for, for collaborating with us on, on this event. Um, it's such a pleasure always to work with the Armenian Institute. I'm the founder of the International Armenian Literary Alliance, uh, a nonprofit that supports the reading, writing, and publishing of, of Armenian literature. Uh, we, we are so excited for our first collaboration with the Armenian Institute, and we hope it's the first of many. I'm especially proud that today's 
event is uh, brings together uh, three Armenian nonprofits run run by women. And without further ado, I will uh, hand the microphone over to Lola Kundakshan. Congratulations, Lola. Thank, thank you, Olivia. Thank you, Tato. So uh, good afternoon, and thank you for joining us in this celebration. To the International Armenian Literary Alliance and the Armenian Institute in London, thank you for an amazing year of collaborations. And we have a beautiful brochure that we'll be sharing on the chat line. All of the poems are there. There's one and some beautiful watercolors uh, that were brought together by Anushka. Thank you, Anushka, for your design. Uh, the Armenian Poetry Project is an ever-growing presence on the internet. It has received close to 1,400,000 original unique hits for its 2,840 poems to date, which include text and audio, as Tato said. In addition to our thousands of subscribed writers, there are blogger and Twitter followers as well, which is great. As I was preparing for this event, I shared with my colleagues these statistics. Readership geographically is mostly in the United States and Armenia. Even though the series is multilingual, mostly Armenian, French, and English, the top 10 poems are all Armenian, and one of them is actually in classical Armenian, which we'll, we'll, we'll read today. But there are also many hits from smaller regions of the world searching for Armenian poems, which is why I like to say they are the lonely and the curious reaching out to poetry. This list is long, but I must say heartfelt thanks at least to you, our readers. You make it all possible. Your constant encouragement motivates the authors, the translators, and the teachers. I want to thank those who sent their books and notes and the contemporary authors, many of them, for their permissions to post their poems. In particular, thank you to Dr. Levon Avdoyan, formerly at Library of Congress, now retired, for his assistance in researching books, to Theo Martin van Lind for his scholarship and help in acquiring texts, to Dr. Artsvi Bachchinian for his scholarship and translations, to Professor Dora Sakayan for her translations of Balur Sevag and her enthusiasm, to Professor Valentina Calzolari for her translations published in the series Patrimoine Littéraire, to Nancy Agabian, whose Gartal series kept the Armenian literary scene vibrant in New York City, to Per Vic, who introduced his grandfather, Harut Kostantian, in his work, to Catherine Fletcher and the editorial team at Ratapalax for inviting me to collaborate on a special feature on post-genocide Armenian poetry, to my poet friends worldwide, to the budding poets who send me emails and who participated in the first three anniversary poetry blasts and past poetry writing competitions, to the volunteer readers who contributed their voices in audio recordings, to the staff at Horizon Weekly's Literary Supplement in Montreal, the Aztec Daily's Literary and Art Supplement in Beirut, the New York Public Library's Humanities Research Department, the Glendale Public Library, the Zoharab Center in New York, the HBU's Bibliothèque Nubar, and the Librairie Samuelian in Paris. Thank you. And now I would like to introduce today's readers. The first one is Harach Chilingirian. Thank you, Lola, for this opportunity to bring us together on a really an exciting uh, birthday or anniversary, the 15th anniversary of the Armenian Poetry Project. Congratulations for this most wonderful project, which I believe has made Armenian poetry a vital part of our everyday life. And you have had an important and a critical role in making that happen to bring out from the books, from the te textbooks, from the classrooms when we were growing up and putting it in our daily life so that we could enjoy this beautiful po poetry that you put together. But equally, the poetry that you create and you uh, write and uh, give us to enrich our uh, lives. So thank you, thank you, thank you for all this beautiful work that you're doing. 
And uh, I'm doing the first uh, reading <clears throat> by Bedros Turian. Many of you know, I'm sure, Bedros Turian is a very well-known Armenian uh, poet, probably one of the youngest poets who is well-known but uh, died at the age of 21. Uh, but his, the, the treasure, the collection of his uh, poems have come to us throughout the generations. It's, he is one of the most loved uh, Armenian uh, poets, in, especially in uh, Western Armenian uh, literature. I'm sure many of you have seen this photo of Bedros Turian, or a sketch rather, which was actually made 20 years after his death. He was so popular that the Armenian newspaper publishers, the intellectuals in Constantinople, they made sure that there is an image of Bedros Turian to be remembered for the generations to come. And they spent considerable time in uh, working with artists, sketchers, to uh, interview his mother, his brothers, and they came up with uh, a sketch of Bedros Turian. Interestingly, in 1959, uh, the Turkish government privatized part of the cemetery where he was buried and his remains were removed in 1959 and his skull was taken to the Armenian Patriarchate. It's a long and very interesting uh, story, but eventually in 1969, his remains were taken to Armenia, the Soviet Armenia, and in 1972, uh, a, a physician, Professor Antranik Jaranyan, recreated the image of Bedros Turian based on the remains of his skull that was brought to Armenia. And this is what you see, the doctor and the recreation of Bedros Turian's image. The poem I'm going to read in Armenian is called Hayuhin, the Armenian woman. And it's a beautiful uh, story or the scene is Bedros Turian is on the boat going, returning home to Üsküdar from the European part of Istanbul, taking the ferry and going to Üsküdar and this is what happens on the boat as he goes home. You will see the English on the screen. Ashnan mecher yeregoma veratartsiz yuskidar ote barzer hohme mermik zovun churer nal hantardik shokenavin Saravant and Stats Angin Maransnagi Ushatutam Pies Nuin Orvan Larakir Neregartai Meg Malhangard Santuchen Vel Yelnelu Votnatsainma Shepotetsis Yev Achkere Startsuzi Tevi Hain Goma Hayumi Hayuhi Mer Vel Yelno Partsrahasak Yev Keratem, Ansav Modes Ne Sikajem, Nestav Angun Mint Tem Artem. Vo Garzeste Ne Yergnain Zabart Nun Mer Var Ichads, Luis Suprelu, Ser Kurelu, Chrovelu, Serdern Ayrads. Al Chikidem, Te Inchu. Gurgin Achkeras Harats in Tertigis Vramisht, Sir the Ser Ampoch Hrovats. Minchev Meknal Navastin, Herbot Sainov Makalov Mot, a Sav. Hasan Kuskudar, I'll inchness the rest on hot. Ver Vertuzi Achkeras, Vochvok Desi Mech Navin. Mina gain kier guknis, 
Megnes Megnal Navastin. Thank you, Haraj. Our next reader is Susan Patty. Thank you, Lola. And thank you so much for inviting me to be part of this amazing anniversary party. I echo everybody else's congratulations and uh, it's been such a pleasure to know you over the years and now to get to uh, jump in at the deep end, basically, <laughs> and swim with all of you. Lola let me choose my poem tonight and um, this one jumped out at me because um, although it was written over a hundred years ago, it still is very um, appropriate today. Many things have changed, of course, but uh, but many things remain the same. So I, I think this is this is a very special poem. It's written by Shushanik Kuhimian, Kuhimian. Um, it's called I Want to Live. She lives between 1876 and 1927. The poem was written in 1907. For me, it's a little interesting side thing here that it was written by a Shushanik. It's translated by Shushan Avakyan and my alias is, of course, Shushan Chilingirian. We've got triple Shushans here. I'm going to read it in English and the Armenian is in the program, which is in your chat line. I want to live. I want to live, but not a lavish life trapped in obscurity, indifferent and foolish, nor as an outright hostage of artificial beauty, a frail creature, delicate and feeble, but equal to you, O oh men, prosperous as you are, powerful and headstrong, fit against calamities, ingenious in mind, with bodies full of vigor. I want to love, unreserved, without a mask, self-willed like you, so that when in love I can sing my feelings to the world and unchain my heart, a woman's heart, before the crowds, ignoring their stern judgments with my shield and destroy the pointed arrows aimed at me with all my vitality unrestrained. I want to act equal next to you as a loyal member of the people let me suffer again and again, day or night, wandering from one place to another, always struggling for the ideal, the ideal of freedom and let this burden torment me in my exile, if only I may gain a purpose in this life. I want to eat comfortably as you do from that same fair bread for which I gave my share of holy work in the struggle for existence, humble and meek, without feeling shame. Let me shed sweat and tears for a blessed earning. Let scarlet blood flow from my workers' hands and let my back tire in pain. I want to fight. First, as your rival, standing against you with an old vengeance, since absurdly and without mercy, you turned me into a vassal through love and force. Then after clearing these disputes of my gender, I want to fight against the agonies of life, courageously like you, hand in hand, facing the struggle to be or not. Thank you. Our next reader is Tina Shakalian. Hello, everyone. Hello, Lola. Uh, I've been friends with Lola since Girl Scouts days. And um, I, <laughs> I'm thankful that I'm invited to uh, read. Um, I used to uh, recite when I was in my school. And now it's bringing me lots of memories to do it again. This time I'm reading. I'm reading uh, Irma Ajemyan's, um, the title is Megara. Uh, a little bit, I think we should just say what we do. I'm a visual artist and uh, I'm also uh, heading the 
uh, Venice Biennale. We, I'm representing the Armenian Pavilion in the Venice Biennale, and uh, we are doing it this year. So uh, against all odds, we are persevering and we are um, opening August 28th. For those of you who are interested, I'm sure we'll have uh, lots of Facebook posts. Uh, this poem was uh, um, uh, dedicated to Erol Sarafyan. I'll be reading the Armenian and the English version. It has two parts. Uh, the number one is An Borgenegare. Senyagma Uramenpan Ansharj Champ Karadzat, Ararganer Irengirens Asharnerun Horera, Bastarma Lerg Ubergvads Miadar. Luisi Muti Havejagan Ait Nun Harin Agenket. Tungenestis Ugishinches Arantin, Tunga Kedzes One Ham Fergus Vases, Tunga Genas, Gemadazes, Generges, Gianki Mahvan Sahman Nerejech Kelov. Hedo Bahmelurgamanas, Neman Sarat Senyagit, Gansharjanas, Nor Gianki Mazileruntem Anparpar. Yep Gdesnes Odarodi Kusenyagit Sverneren Ambamads. Yerguachker Lusa Jajanch Bastaren Turskajtin. Eis ein Bahner Ur Amenpan Irlumin Hasadze. An Vorgenegarvi. Yet a nunisk nestil chuses, tignatorin an Sharjuchan Mecha, tun. Ku kizeret harnashapot gertan mahvil bastari mahoruchan mech agama. Kukuineret, Luise antin, volort neru yezerk neren sogalov, hangart kinan mad neru dak harasharj. Madadzum neret ein kan kahni, achkeret turs lusarzagi uruchamp. Gertan zodvil, achkeru het kisapach. Vorong temkit pechich nerun dak takun. Miss Voskorot Gechevken, Uvertiner Iraruhed, Irarukov Gvazen, Yerek, Blainkov Darazuchunut Ankutoren, Mageresi Verazads, Gaharvazen, Gamgeshoyen, Bastarim Vorg, Ulerk Yeresa. Kesme Antin Tungashin Vis, Kesme Angach Tungohoris, Kesme Heru Tungashin Chess. Ampochuchunat Geherana Genos Rana Hedes Hede Zerkerovet Vorkan Garchis Achkerovet Vorkan Kotsvis Altun Tunches Tunkes Metus Urishime Magnerundak Gedzenis The One Who Paints A Room Where Everything Is Motionless objects wrapped up in their worlds, a canvas bare and stretched evenly, attentive to the eternal game of light and dark. You sit and breathe alone. You draw and wait impatiently. You stand, you think, you paint, breaking the boundaries of life and death. Then you are silent for a moment, like your studio, Quietly, you stir facing the emerging life on your canvas. When you nod, notice oddly from the shadows in your studio, two sparkling eyes smiling from the canvas. This is the moment when everything is completed. The one who painted. Even if you do not want to sit still in the armchair, your features will un involuntarily merge with the depths of a canvas your colors beyond the light, crawling from the edges of the spheres, suddenly transform under rapidly moving strokes. Your most secret thoughts bolt out of your eyes, like lightning merging with the half painted ones, which hide under the cells of your face, separate flesh from bones, and the brushes running side by side cruelly transform your three-dimensional body to a flat surface, hitting and stroking the smooth and bare surface of the canvas. You are rebuilt beyond your body. You think independently of yourself. You breathe away from your core, your whole being separating, gradually transforming. 
as much as you cling to your hands, as much as you enclose yourself, you are no longer you. You are outside yourself, reborn through another's art. Thank you. Thank you. Our next reader is Theo Martin van Lint. Uh, my name is Theo Martin van Lint. Um, uh, I'm uh, Kalust Bubenkian, Professor of Armenian Studies in Oxford. And uh, I mentioned this because my two predecessors have uh, contributed a lot to uh, making Armenian literature uh, much better known in the world. The, the first of them uh, is Charles Dowsett, who uh, is present in the Armenian Institute because part of his library is now there. But he wrote a book about Sayat Nova with um, a lot of translations in it. Very interesting because if you look from one page to another, you can see that the same Armenian is translated or the same Georgian or the same pre uh, azeri Eastern uh, Turkish um, is translated in different ways for the same poem. So you have a lot of comparative material there. Robert Thompson, my direct predecessor, translated uh, most of Armenian historiography and a lot of Armenian biblical commentary into, uh, into uh, uh, English. And um, we will see some of the work that he has done uh, later on. Uh, I'm going to read a poem by uh, Bardasar de Pir, who lived in 18th century Constantinople. He was a poet, obviously, a composer, a scientist, a teacher and a printer, a leader in the national emancipation movement through his efforts in education and in printing. And in 1741, he was appointed by the famous patriarch Jacob Nalian as headmaster of the Patriarchate's school. He compiled many textbooks for use in, in schools. And as printer, he published uh, some very well-known works like uh, Grigor Narekatsi's uh, Matian Vor Perkutian, the Narek, uh, the Book of Lamentation. Further, the first printed edition of the great theologian Grigor Tatevatsi's uh, Kirk Hartsmans, the Book of Questions. And also a first in print of David the Invincible Philosopher's Prolegomena to Philosophy, which was a... a a standard uh, text um, in the medieval schools up into the 18th century. And as far as uh, poetry is concerned, apart from the Narek, he also published Arakel Shunetzi's Adam Girk, the Book of Adam. And one may find work by Badassar de Pir translated in the second volume of the Heritage of Armenian Literature, one of the big volumes uh, um, edited by four. Uh, well-known Arme Armenians, professors in academia. And Bartasar wrote poetry in the Ashur tradition, so the, the love poetry edition, tradition, but he touched on more than love poetry alone. Uh, the poem I'm going to read is, um, is a love poem. And um, I think that we should um, uh, read it as a symbol, as a token for uh, of our gratitude to Lola for what she has given us in uh, the Armenian poetry, uh, for the lonely and uh, what was it, Lola? I forget. Uh, the lonely <laughs> and the. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> the I'll, I'll tell you later. <laughs> very good. Yes. Lonely and the curious. The curious, yes. How could I forget? Ari im Katsrik Aravni. Voskigen zor zarmanali, eskes desnorin pur yerani, tu pariyagir, pariyagir, tu yagir, yeref tsar, ipru aref ins zaketsar, tsensutyung ins bargevetsar, tu pariyaka yagir, pariyagir, urachutyung hoko imo, vochko penavin aransko, of him as nif, gera, gera harko, tu pariyekir, pariyekir, terdumei urachatza, merialei gendanatza, inzierani vorskestesa, tu pariyekir, pariyekir, pariyekir im sireli, im geras nif, gerkoveli. Im achats Luis im nazeli tu pariyekir 
Paris een keer. Come, my sweet little dove, amazing apple of gold, who sees you counts his blessings hold. You are welcome, you are welcome. You who came appeared to me like the sun you emerged, gladness on me you bestowed. You are welcome, you are welcome. Joy for my soul, not at all without you. O oh, my noble, most respected one, you are welcome, you are welcome. Sad was I, I rejoiced. Dead was I, I revived. Blessed am I, that you I behold. You are welcome, you are welcome. You are welcome, my beloved one, my most noble, most praiseworthy one, light of my eyes, my elegant one. You are welcome, you are welcome. The second poem is um, already has already been mentioned by Lola, that is the birth of Ahagan, uh, which is probably, and now we are sure, the most famous piece of pre-Christian Armenian poetry. We have to thank Mofses Khorinatsi for its survival. He complains, Mofses, of the love of song and wine of the inhabitants of the province of Gorten in Nachitchevan, which luckily does not prevent him from quoting this ancient gem. This province's merry singing and dancing was a headache already for Mesrop Mashtots, who found no Christians there except the prince of the region, although Christianity had come to Armenia a full century before. It was one of the reasons he decided that the Armenians needed their own alphabet in which they could write their own language and hear the gospel preached in it and the liturgy celebrated. But this poem opens a window on a period that reaches far back into the depths of time. We catch a glimpse of the gods of Armenia before its Christianization, and this poetic gem is all the more precious for it. Yerkner Yerkin, Yerkner Yerkir, Yerkner Yevtsovn Sirani, Yerken Itsovun Uner, Yevskarmiken Yerknik, Und Yeregan Pochzuch Yelaner, Und Yeregan Pochbots Yelaner, Yevi Botsuin Vazer Chateash Vadanikik. Nahur herumer, botsuner morus, yef achkunken ein aregakunk. Yerginke yergunki mecher, yergire yergunki mecher. Gerkner naev tiranakuin tsov, yergunk uner naev tsovun mech. Garmerik yereknige. Yerekni poren zuchkeler, yerekni poren potskeler. Upotsin mechen gewazer hartdeash baranegikme. Anhur mazeruner, anayev potsma morukuner, u achkere arekakner nein. The birth of Ahagan. Heaven was in labor, earth was in labor, the purple sea was in labor. In the sea of labor, pain held the little reed. Along the reed stalk rose smoke. Along the reed stalk rose flame, and from the flame leapt up a golden haired little boy. He had hair of flame, he had a beard of flame, and his eyes were little suns. Thank you, Theo. We're going to jump ahead to um, more contemporary poems, or rather modern poems, by Arshak Chobanyan and Sibyl, read by Vasken Davidian. Hello, everyone. Um, it's such a pleasure. It's such an honor to be part of this celebration of poetry on the um, 15th anniversary of the um, launch of the wonderful Armenian Poetry Project. Lola, you've given us the treasure. Um, we are so grateful to you. Um, I'm, I'm Vaskan Khashik Tavitian. Um, I'm an art historian and cultural historian. Um, currently the Kalus Gulbenkian Postdoctoral Fellow in Armenian Studies at the Oriental Institute, University of Oxford. Um, the two short poems um, I shall be presenting are by two Ottoman Armenian intellectuals, not usually remembered for their poetry, and, but perhaps this should actually change. The first of the two, Hastagal uh, Latoch, followed by a translation, May Your Dream Be Clear by Lola herself, is by Ashak Chobanyan. He was a teacher, a poet, a playwright, literary critic, journalist, translator, editor, and publisher born in Besiktas on the European side of Constantinople in 1872. From 1895, Chobanyan made Paris his home as part of that wave of intellectuals, writers and artists fleeing from the autocratic and anti-Armenian horrors of the Abdul Hamid II regime. 
He is best remembered for his translation and scholarly work and for launching the celebrated art and literary journal Anahid in Paris, published with intervals between 1898 and 1949. He died in Paris in 1954 following a car accident. Hastag al Latour. Hastag al Latour Yerazet. Yev Tor Dardama Gabuit, Schachzene Mitget. Inchbes Ashran Derevma, Horma Baduit. Abrean Gach, Yevujov. Kuhokit Hamemat. Yerir Yanki and Dain Mech Ganansh Zarma has Sarmat. Mitzker Sirdet Chuin Yertal, the Pal Tibvazov. Tebin Badagat Kena, Inchbes Keder, Tebizov. May your dream be clear, and may the blue uncertainty not stir your mind like autumn flattering leaves on the ground. Live free and strong according to your spirit. Be in the forest of life, a green tree with strong roots. Don't let your heart go and accidentally float on the water. Pursue your dreams like the river flowing to the sea. The author of the second poem I shall be presenting was also a native of Constantinople. Born Zabel Khanjian in Uskudar on the Asian side of the city in 1863. She wrote from an early age, among the earliest Armenian women to write poetry in the modern period, under the pen names Anahid, Oryot Alis, and most famously Sibyl. Zabel Asadur is today remembered firstly for her role as a founding member of the society Askanever Hayuhiats and Gerutyun, the altruistic society of Armenian women which was active between 1879 and 1895 and 1908-1915 and that it was dedicated to promote the education of girls and to set up schools in the Ottoman Armenian provinces. And secondly, as an educator and for her co-authorship with her second husband, Hrant Asadur, of highly acclaimed textbooks of Armenian language and literature. She died in Istanbul following an earlier stroke in 1934. I'm not quite sure whether, I'm not sure why I'm actually um, giving you the cause of death, but here we go. I've written it, so I'm, I'm reading it. Um, so Zabel Asadu's poem, Zorun, To the Sea, is a gentle meditative piece written on Kanala Island in the Marmara Sea in August, 1912. It presents the poet sitting by her window, dreaming, absorbed in the silence of the dark night. Despite the sea lying before her, she is so distracted in her own thoughts that she can barely hear the sound of the waves. Yet she feels the silent tumbling of the water towards the infinite boundless shores of the sea and senses the secret contortions and the agitated and troubled animations of the sea's depth. The poet turns her gaze upon the depths upon the depths of her own desperate yet inscrutable soul that she says so resemble those of the bottomless sea. Lucky you, O oh sea, she utters, that you can follow the wind wherever it will take you. Zovun. Mut kisherin leutian mech chora suis, paduhanis acher nestats gerazem. Laina zaval zoven hon pervadze am huis. Alik nebu hezunen hazibilesem. Sagain gescam lur tabalumachurin, tebi an hun, tebi anzar apukner. Anor kachni volarum nere chorin, chrofkna nor alutskin mech yeruzer. Ugnaim im hokvuin horn husahad, vor an hadag zovun ein kangen mani. Yeranikes gesem, odzov, vor azat gehedevis hovin, vor eskes gedani. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lola. Thank you. Our next reader is Tato Ayvazian. Thank you, Lola. Uh, because I forgot to introduce myself, I was so excited in the beginning, I will do now. I'm Tato or Tate Vikaevazian, and I'm the director of the Armenian Institute. So my first poem was assigned to me by Lola because she knows my love for Nahabet Kuchak and medieval Armenian poetry. And if you want to read something joyful, just go to Lola's site and search for Kuchak's poem. He lived in 16th century and he has most joyful, lovely, vivid, erotic poetry you can imagine. And Lola has given me something very funny about a 
broken heart, who is, which is being traded and bargained for. So I'll read the Middle Armenian version of it. It's, um, it's called Sertika Semalul Yeger. Sertika Semalul Yeger, Zid Amen Malker Kutzache. Hoshiar, am Haraj Katsir, Kam Kene, Kam Maslahate. As Gina Lavlov Katre, Vora Menich Wachinch Chikene, Hartsir, Tanka Vajanara, Amena Play Chika Kene. And I'll read the short translation in English, makes, always makes me smile this um, uh, poem. My heart has broken up and spilled and put its contents up for sale. Come dearest, come and make a bid, name a good price, for if you fail to make a purchase, look some other men might buy my treasures, knowing not their worth. So token haggle, buy each little thing, so no one else can own me on this earth. So this is a good tip from Kuchak, how to deal with broken heart. <laughs> Second poem is very different. And we talked about this with Lola. So one of our mottos at Armenian Institute is keeping Armenian culture alive. And I think Lola feels very strongly to bring a lot of underappreciated, underrated, forgotten poems, poets and poems alive. And this one is uh, from Metaxe, who was a Soviet Armenian poet, a very interesting character herself. I discovered recently that she used to be a sailor, uh, politically very active. I remember seeing her in 88 during Karabakh movement on the steps of opera, among everyone, not being afraid of the government or anything. And this poem touched me by its music of its language and uh, by its message, somehow reminding me of Arjan Sandastan, which we will hear later on. It's called, I'll read the Armenian, Eastern Armenian version, and um, I think there is no translation, unfortunately. It's a wish for New Year's night. It's almost like a blessing. Take on that are camera than air, man can't you chop to let's win. Of Pentromes are dance making, hang cards get near ice kisher. Take on lots of the Hurach care, Tortiz are an ice kisher. Can't you observe care near our husband, Harash Capra and ice kisher. Take on certain chantna hands of Darnam Bari Unero, ye will sure ach Yankov handavar when ice kisher. Temolovats and sort Nerkan. Darcit organized Kisher, Sir Pagots Vatsir of Matneni and Sojaknais Kisher. Take on Bachti Peshot Jampek, Tortsan Kukov Ganachen, Uyer Janik Spasumu, Polor Narvenais Kisher. Teasharum Banduk Nerkan, Tortun Darna Nais Kisher. Hadenakan Haverjutam, Vochagur Venais Kisher. Thank you and happy birthday, Armenian Poetry Project. Thank you. I'll be reading uh, the works of two individuals who may be very different from each other, but I found out recently while doing research that they were both published in Izmir in 1913 in a journal called New Literature. I thought that was rather interesting. Uh, Taniel Varujan was born in Eastern Turkey, today's Eastern Turkey studied in Bolis, in Venice, and then finally in the University of Ghent. Then he returned home and was a teacher. He was one of the victims of April 24. While the second uh, individual whose work I'm reading is Haigan Ushmak, who was a feminist writer, an editor born in 1883, who died in 1966. And uh, I thought very, it was very interesting that I found them together after choosing them for today's uh, program. Daniel Vadujan, Antastan. Antastan is the ritual of blessing the four corners of the earth. Adevelian gom nashari, hararuchun torella, voch aduner, kerdin kosin, lain yeragin mechagosin. Uyapunche gochnagan amen kuragi, 
ոտներ կուչուն թողլա։ Ալվ մջյան գողմն աշխարի պերի ուչուն թողլա։ Ամեն աստխե ծող գայլագի և ամեն հասկ սուլե ոսկի։ Եվ ոչխարներն եպ սարին վրա առածին ձիլ ու ձաղիկ թողլա։ Հուսիսային գողմն աշխարի առադուչուն թողլա։ Ոսկի ծովուն մեջ ծորյանին, հավետ լողատող կերանդին և լայն ամպարն աղուներուն և պացվի պերգուչուն թողլա։ Հարավային գողմն աշխարի բդղապերում թողլա։ Ձաղրի մեղը պետակներուն։ Ուպս, լոս մեր մեջ։ Ձաղրի մեղը պետակներուն հորդի կինին պաժակներուն ու եպ տխեն հարսները հացը պարի սիրեղ կուչուն թողլլա։ At the eastern part of the earth, let there be peace. Let sweat, not blood, flow in the broad vein of the furrow. And at the toll of each hamlet's bell, let there rise hymns of exaltation. At the western part of the earth, let there be fecundity. Let each star sparkle with dew and each husk be cast in gold. And as the sheep graze on the hills, let bud and blossom bloom. At the northern part of the earth, let there be abundance. In the golden sea of the wheat field, let the scythe swim incessantly. And as gates of granaries open wide, jubilation let there be at the southern part of the earth let all things bear fruit let the honey thrive in the beehive and may the wine run over the cups and when brides bake the blessed bread let the sound of song rise and spread translated by tato sonans hi ganush mark inch best Ինչպես սիրեմը սկեզ սիրելիս, որ սերը սլա միշտ դեվագան ու դարպեր, ինչպես սիրեմը սկեզ իմ հոգիս, որ նմանը չրած լան ուրիշներ, ինչպես, աս է, երազեմ կեզ, որ հոգնած, չծանրանան աչկերս արդուն ու ծած, ծայներ ձիլերն ալ ոլոր, ինչպես կազմեմ դարերը սիրույս գրագին, որ հոն պոլոր իղցերս ալ պորպոքին, ինչպես ասեմ թե ճաստված մեզ թում գամ անգե ավելի վեր հոգիմը վար գրագե անցդվեր, ինչպես, սագայն ինչպես սիրեմ կեզ անուշ How can I love you, my dear, so my love remains constant and different? How can I love you, my soul, as no one else has done? How? Tell me, as I dream of you, tired, my eyes not growing heavy and low when awake, voices undisturbed, undisturbing the rest, quiet as I fall asleep, how can I envelop you with all my love? So the breeze and the twirling sprouts are filled with envy. How do I build the elements of my love's fire so that there all my desires ignite? How can I say to you that you are godly or maybe even better, a soul bright with fire, devoted? However, how can I love you, sweet lover, so that this mad love lasts forever? And our next reader is Kahik Stepan Sarkisian. Uh. Thank you very much, Lola. Um, can you hear me? Uh, thank you, Lola, for inviting me to be part of this celebration. Uh, congratulations on the um, 15th anniversary of your project. Um, my name is Gagik. I'm the librarian and research advisor at the Armenian Institute. Um, I also teach uh, East Armenian um, at AI. Um, I live in Greater London. Uh, Lola asked me to mention what my preferred profession is. And as a retired biochemist, uh, um, research in life sciences remains my preferred profession. 
Um, the poem I'm going to read is by Harut Kostandian. He was born in the port city of Boucher in southern Iran in 1909 and left the country aged 10 with his family and studied at the English college in Bombay. He eventually settled in, um, in France um, and started writing poetry there. Uh, you will find the English translation of this poem in the brochure. Uh, to me, uh, this is like an expanded Robai by Omar Khayyam. Uh, there are the usual suspects of wine, a lover, and heaven and hell. Uh, Harut Kostandian, Utur ins Mibajag Gini. Utur ins Mibajag Gini. Ur tapele arev nirhur, nachkan ore gisher lini, yek siruhis, bajakatur. Nur prismakova bajaki, geres kuchana tsolka ditem. Nemani dem kathreshtaki, satana esteev, gitem. Yek siruhis, letsur bajak, shirt nerit vart noze tsov, u shirt nerit hampuidiagn. Toch kachtsrana naev ginov. Ham puirt lini toch gine ham, ar jananank menk gehenin. Weiz ham puirove te charpenam, chumer adres as niv ginin. Thank you. It's one of my favorite poems. It made me smile. <laughs> <laughs> the next reader is Olivia Katranjian. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lola, for, for including me among these, these readers. It's really an honor. Today, I'm going to read uh, two poems. The first is by Shahan Shanur, who was an Armenian poet born in Istanbul in 1903. He moved to Paris and began publishing work under the name Armen Lubin. Uh, interestingly, he, he, after he changed his name, he garnered a lot of acclaim and, and received many literary awards. Uh, the poem I'm gonna read is from one of his many collections. Uh, this one is called Les Eaux Terrasses or The High Cage. One thing to know about uh, him when listening to the poem is that he suffered from a, a bone disease and, and his home. Uh, I have been asked to read this in, in, in French first. Please, please forgive my New Jersey accent. Uh, Sans rien autour by Armen Lubin. N'ayant plus de maison ni logis, plus de chambre où me mettre, je me suis fabriqué une fenêtre sans rien autour. Fenêtre encadrant la matière par le tracé de son contour, elle s'ouvre comme la paupière, se ferme sans rien autour. Se sont dépouillés les, les vieilles, vieilles amours, mais la fenêtre dépourvue de glace gagne les auteurs, elle se déplace avec son cadre étonnant, qui n'est ni chair ni bois blanc, mais qui conserve la forme exacte d'un oeil parcourant son sillet, l'espace soumis, le temps réé. Et je reste suspendu au cadre qui file. J'en suis la larme la plus inutile. Dans la nuit fermée, dans la, le petit jour, il sur à moi sans rien autour. Here's uh, Lola's English, English translation. With nothing around. No longer having a house or dwelling, no more rooms to put me in, I built myself a window with nothing around. Window framing the material, its outline traced, it opens like an eyelid, closes with nothing around. Stripped of old loves, but a window free of glass, it gains heights, it moves with a, its astonishing frame, which is neither flesh nor white wood, but which keeps the exact shape of an eye browsing without blinking, space exposed, time erased. And I hang on to the frame as it goes by. I'm its most useless tear, tear in the closed darkness at dawn, they open up to me with nothing around. The next poem uh, I'm gonna read is, is, is a favorite of mine. It's by 
Diana Derjovanesian, a New England born poet uh, who is the author of over 25 books of poetry and translations and several plays. She received awards from the National Endowment of the Arts, the Poetry Society of America, the Penn Columbia Translation Center, and many, many other prestigious institutions. William Soroyan called her a rare and awesome talent. I'm going to read her poem, Thanksgiving, from Songs of Bread, Songs of Salt, published in 1990. It was originally printed in Yankee Magazine, uh, and it won the World Order of Narrative Poets Sonnet Award. Thanksgiving. It begins with a line by Edna St. Vincent Millay, love is not all, it is not food nor drink. Nor is food love, but palate sport alone. Even with ceremony, without toast or vow, it is just means of keeping flesh on bone. But table and altar are confused somehow. We substitute our food again, again, for rites of love. Look how this buffet sinks with golden fowl, platters of grain, and candles for eyes to drink, for our eyes to drink. Love is not food, but in the name of those with parched throats, could not eat or pray, whose empty mouths have closed, whose bellies swelled with pain, not meat. We call it sustenance when it is shared, and sharing we call prayer. Thank you. Our next reader is Shahe Mangadian. Thank you, Lola. Shat Shnur Agalem. Lolani Abies, we go back long, long time, uh, and I think Arachinoren Dasnik Dari Arachip, what I uh, we had the privilege of having the poetry project, um, Armenian Poetry Project, automatically became part of my life for many reasons. Most importantly, became part of my life as a teacher back then. In the classroom, my students regularly went into the uh, website and researched on poets and poems, and they looked for uh, a poem that connected to them and then they recited it because we believed, uh, I believed in the classroom that poetry should be recited. Uh, besides the fact that it should be read, it should be recited. So thank you Lola for giving us this tool, uh, this gift so that our younger generation of Armenians uh, can discover these poets and these poems. Uh, my name is Shahim Mangarian, and I'm the principal of St. Gregory Hovsepian School in Pasadena. And Lola gave me two poems to read. The first one is Archi Minasian, Archi Khachig Minasian of Fresno. Most of you know him as the cousin of William Saroyan. Uh, they were both Fresno kids growing up uh, in the early part of the last century. And, um, you know, the famous William Saroyan, who was always in the shadow of his cousin, uh, William Saroyan. And the poem that I'm going to read, it's called Becoming Great. And there's a pronoun we in it. We look at Goethe. And the we, I can almost imagine we being William Saroyan and Archie Minasian walking together in San Francisco. Because at some point they lived in San Francisco together. And... Um, I can just imagine them walking through Golden Gate Park and looking up at the statue of Goethe and Schiller. And this poem is, as they're looking at the statue, this is what Archie writes. Becoming great, we look at Goethe and Schiller, huge bronze statues in the park. And we think someday we'll be like them. You, Goethe and I, Schiller. Then through narrow park lanes, we crawl along solemn and confident, eloquent and witty, ignoring the boys that pass on bicycles and the girls in shorts carrying tennis rackets. And it's just a beautiful moment between these two guys in Golden Gate Park. The next poem I will read, Hayerenov, Ertzank Heranush Arshagyan. Uh, as I did my research on Heranush Arshagyan, I realized that she had such a short, premature life. She died at the age of 18. So by the time she was writing and by the time she got discovered, 
And it says she was discovered by her teachers as this uh, ferocious writer of Armenian poetry. She died in Constantinople in 1905. This is the poem, beautiful poem called Ertsank. Tashtak melok guzei, yev silah meges metin, mat neres ay tashnaga khosetsenel kitnayin. Inch gallar, toh tashnaga mat nerusta heads gallar. Mitna shari mech mikov, berchankov, parak shor marevi, telig meboski, seberter baderem ver. Tashnagi said, in Huzer Sar Hosein. Uanigato Hedzer, Toch Tukchen, Gargamein, Im Mader, Toch Im Tzaves Anigal as the Ver. Yearning. I wish for a piano and a half, hole half dark, my fingers knowing how to make the keys speak, if only it could be making the instrument sob under my fingers in the twilight, like a decoration, the sun's light, like a golden thread sneaking up the wall. My hopes also speaking through my piano, letting them moan, trembling, my fingers curving, letting my pain feel them too. Thank you, Lola. And thank you for that beautiful translation. Thank you. Our next reader is Shake Major Chilingiriam. Thank you, Lola. Uh, thank you very much for asking me, inviting me to be part of this. Um, and congratulations on the 15th birthday. Um, so I've been asked to read Silva Kaputikian's poem. Silva Kaputikian needs no introduction, really. She was one of the best known Armenian writers of the 20th century, uh, recognized as the leading poetess of Soviet Armenia and the grand lady of 20th century Armenian poetry. She is a well-known poet in the diaspora through her many visits and her heartwarming poems. She died at the age of 87 in 2006 and was politically active in Armenia. I had the good fortune actually of meeting her in 1983 in, at my first visit to Soviet Armenia with a, a group of youth from London. And I was asked to recite one of her poems to her in Armenian. <laughs> no pressure. She was wonderful. She really was. Uh, I was made to stand in, you know, we were sitting in her living room and I was made to stand behind a chair. She told me that's okay. And off I went. She was wonderful. So it's the only Armenian poet that I've actually met in person, apart from Lola, of course. Um, and at such an age, it was a very, um, it was a tremendous impression that um, I left Armenia with. So uh, I'm delighted to be reading this in Armenian. There is no English translation. And the other uh, challenge for me is not to sing because I know this poem as a song. So I've really worked at not singing. <laughs> I'll spare you that. Silva Kaputikian Asumente Morazeles. So we know, of course, Hovanes Badalian's song. Ein bes am puit, ein bes hangist, ans nues im tan moto, minch yes urishta nerumist kesem tundrum kahoto. Asumente Morazeles, chem havadum imangin. Barzabestu Herazeles, modus torel kohokin. Asumente ins daveles, chem havadum imangin. Barzabes duch roveles, ut tanjumes im hokin. Ans numes u du, ans numes du u chesnayum, minch yes gangnads molorum, kes achkeris mechem pahom, u tanum em hevestum. Yev ein bes hest ein bes gandun, mat numes ins ashari. Minch do rume volpes yertum, anunatim surterum. Asumente sere sute, chem havatum imangin. Aran siro tunes surte, ari shunstur grahin. 
Our next reader is Arthur Gaidzakian. Uh, thank you so much, Lola. Uh, hey, everybody. Um, my name is Arthur. Uh, I live in California. I am a poet. Um, uh, I, I'm a professor of English. Um, and I work with Lola and Olivia uh, at Yala, who have also become my friends. Um, uh, congratulations, Lola. What an honor to be here with all of you. Um, I have been asked to read the work from the work of Maro Markarian. And uh, Maro was, um, from my research, I found she was an award-winning poet who uh, really needs no introduction. Uh, well known in the Soviet Union. Uh, she was born in, on, on December 22, 1915 in Georgia and passed in 1999. Uh, during the course of her life, uh, she was published widely and had many achievements. Uh, she graduated from Yerevan State University in 1938 in the Faculty of Philology. Um, she, her first book of poems was Closeness in 1940 and she has published her work has appeared in several collections. Um, her poetry has been described from Victoria Rowe as deceptively simple language and images to represent the human condition and emotion. And um, after looking at this poem, uh, I see that it exemplifies just that. The poem I'm about to read to you uh, is about facing mortality in the face of everything we find important during the course of our very short lives. Uh, this poem reminds me of my grandmother because her name was Maro also. And uh, after she fat passed and we were, you know, cleaning out her stuff, putting them in boxes, I found her unfinished crossword puzzles and her to-do list scribbled in her small journals. Um, it just reminds me that it's the little things we leave behind that penetrate the deepest um, in the living. And so I will read the Armenian, Amenin Shtohi, and the English translation, I Left All Things, translated by Tatu Sones. Amenin Shtohi. Amenin Shtohi, Tohi Yes Vahvan, Bites Yetevitz Elvar Chimenatsen. Mish Karzume Teskis Beneder, Unor Pitigan Yerkeren Iskakan. Naum em hokus, hok natsu an ser, el tetev tohu tar chimenatsen. Amenish tori, tori, yes, varvan, baitsietevitz el var chimenatsen. I left all things. I left everything all for tomorrow. Behind it now. I see no new morning. I always believed all was just beginning and the real songs were soon to follow. I look deep inside, loveless and hollow. There are no light lines or verses to sing. I left all things for tomorrow's spring, yet behind it, there's no new morrow. Thank you. And our last reader joins us via a pre-recorded video, Nancy Agabian. Hi, everybody. My name is Nancy Agabian. I live in Massachusetts, and I'm a writer and a professor. I'm sorry I can't be there. I'm teaching a creative writing workshop based on the work of Armenian writers. And it's happening at the exact same time. <laughs> and uh, it's quite a coincidence because I don't think I'd be teaching such a workshop if it hadn't been for the Armenian Poetry Project and Lola's tireless and inspiring work. So I'm, in the, I'm there in spirit and I'm so glad this event is taking place to honor and mark the, the wonder that is the Armenian Poetry Project. Um, so I'm going to 
read a poem by Leonardo Alishan, who um, was born in Tehran in 1951 and died in 2005. He was a writer, a scholar, and a translator, and a professor of Complet and Persian at the University of Utah. He published three collections of poetry and a book of short stories. And I'm going to read an untitled poem um, that was that first appeared in Raft a journal of poetry and criticism in 1990. At my birthday parties, we played musical chairs. Whoever was left standing got a big hug from Granny. She knew all too well how it felt to be the last one left alone, standing. Thank you. Thanks, Lola, for all your amazing work, bringing so much poetry with so much heart and soul to the world. We are all so grateful to you. That was a beautiful closing reading. Chorin Shunul Hagaluchun, to my friends who joined us in this celebration, to Yala and Aie, for co-hosting this event, putting together the brochure and spreading the word. This event is a labor of love for poetry, Armenia, its future, and let's stay in touch. I'd like to thank to everyone. Lola Chan, happy birthday again. I think you, your warm, amazing personality combined with poetry is just irresistible. I want to say thank you to everyone joining us on Facebook as well. We have lots of people watching on Facebook, commenting, sharing, sending lots of hearts and love. Um, I hope everyone enjoyed it. Go to Armenian Poetry Project's website, read more poetry, support Lola. Go to Yala's website. They have millions of things coming up, competitions, programs articles and come to us as well Armenian Institute's website we have a lot going on as well lots of events coming up and if you haven't had enough of Lola there is a podcast with Lola on our website um, I was lucky enough to sit down with her for a whole half an hour and have her reading poetry just to me but I'm ready to share it with everyone here is the link on our website thanks again and keep in touch. Happy birthday, Poetry Project. I just I just want to thank uh, Tato and Anushka and Gagik and everyone at the Armenian Institute for, for making this possible. Uh, the Armenian Institute does so much to celebrate Armenian literature, and, and we, are, we are all grateful uh, to you. Lola, congratulations. Um, and I hope this is, this is the first of, of many such events celebrating Armenian literature. Thank you, Tato. Thank you. Thank you, Olivia. Thank you, Lola. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.